According to statistics, for every 10 musicians, about 8 are going to experience a playing-related injury at some point. I think that's just insane, and I feel that one of my jobs and goals as a violin teacher is to become more aware about how these injuries occur and to help others take preventative measures before these initial symptoms occur. Hey, this is Ina Langerman from Violina.live helping you along your musical journey. One thing I noticed that was lacking in my own and also in many of my colleagues higher education in music is that physical conditioning and well-being is an issue that is seldom brought to attention in pretty much any music school or conservatory and it's still something that only comes up in conversation after an injury is already affecting someone. Now, I'm lucky because I never sustained an injury to the point where I had to take an extended break from playing. But unfortunately, like most orchestral musicians, especially in the upper string section, I suffer from occasional flare-ups and pain, overworking muscles, especially up here in the upper, uh, upper back area, trapezius muscles and the neck. This is very common for orchestral players, especially for violinists and violists. Three years ago, I finally went to a physical therapist and I was very surprised because I learned that the plane itself was not the biggest thing contributing to the problem. I learned that the main reason my upper traps were overworking so much when I held the violin up for extended periods of time was the fact that my mid-back muscles were very weak. So most of my exercises in physical therapy involved mobilization and strengthening of that area. In this video, I'm going to share with you some of my favorite exercises for the mid-back. And these are some that you can try at home with little to no equipment, since not everybody has access to a fancy cable row machine like this one here. I do strongly recommend for all musicians, amateurs, professionals, whatever, make instrument specific exercises part of your routine at some point. If you're not sure where to get started for this, check out the book called Musicians Essential Exercises by Angela McCuston. Angela is a certified personal trainer and physical therapist for musicians. She creates instrument specific workouts which can be used for conditioning, strengthening and recovery. No matter what instrument you play, and yes this includes singers and conductors as well, Angela has something for you in her arsenal. I'm going to put a link to her website, musicstrong.com, in the description below so you can browse around. Now, I am a brand ambassador of Music Strong, so if you decide to purchase anything, be sure to mention me in at checkout so that I can receive a small commission and so that this can be a way for you to also support me so I can keep making free content like this for you. So a few months ago, I made a short video with a sample workout that I like to do before concerts, which I recorded at a hotel fitness center. So I'm going to go through five of my favorite exercises. And before I do, just a quick disclaimer that I am not a personal trainer or physical therapist or doctor of any kind. So if these exercises are not suitable for you or if you're not sure that they're safe, please consult with a specialist. So let's go through these exercises. And these can be done with little to no equipment. Any equipment that I do demonstrate here are mainly resistance bands. You can also use free weights if you have any, but honestly, you can do this with things that are light and you can pack with you. The first exercise are T's and Y's, which you can actually do either in a standing position or on the stomach on a bench. I'm going to show it in a standing position. So this is something you can pretty much do anywhere. The main idea actually behind all these exercises is is to retract the shoulder blades. You know, retract the shoulder blades for all of these exercises. Bend your knees slightly, hip width apart. Bring your arms overhead like this, like in a Y shape. And retract your shoulder blades down and back. And you can repeat this several times. So right now I'll show you at a different angle so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. So right now I'm in my starting position. And I'm going to retract my shoulder blades down and back and bring it back to neutral position. So I'll do that about five to ten times. You can do more depending on where you are. And the T shape, very similar. Just bring your arms out this way. Same idea. Retract the shoulder blades. 
Again, you can do these exercises laying down as well. And if this is too easy for you, you can take a couple dumbbells to add some more resistance to make it more difficult. Or you could add more repetitions, of course. Exercise number two is actually very similar to this. Laying down on a bench, stomach down. You do something very similar with your arms by your side. And you're gonna go into a mini cobra. As you come up for the cobra, squeeze those shoulder blades, bring the arms right behind you and turn the palms so they face down. That's gonna create the maximum impact. So repeat that several times, do a couple sets of this. This one has been very essential to me this past year especially. The third exercise is probably my favorite of the series because it's super easy to do, super quick. Um, I do this one all the time and the best way to do this is with a resistance band like this. This one is from a brand called TheraBand. And this is the one actually I used in physical therapy. They gave me this piece for free to go. This is like a sample, but they sell them in large amounts and in different colors, which represent different resistance levels. This one's in the middle, not too strong, not too weak. So I like it. So in this exercise, what you're gonna do is take your upper arms and elbows, bring them by your side like this. Hold the resistance band with the palms facing up, like that. And keeping those elbows by your side, pull the resistance band outwards. And as you're doing this, notice which muscles are responsible. Notice that it's not your forearms that are responsible for this motion, it's actually your mid-back area. It's the same action of your shoulder blades squeezing together that makes this work. This is really, really good for recovery as well. You could do this before rehearsal, you could do this after rehearsal. And this thing, I know it fits in your case. Bring it with you, keep it there. Before we get to the next exercise, if you're getting any value from this video so far, please give me a quick thumbs up down below to help support this channel and so that YouTube is more likely to share this with more folks. Okay, exercise number four. This one I do at the gym all the time. It's rows. Now you can do this either at the gym with a cable machine, but since many of us do not have access to a cable machine, you can also do this at home with resistance bands or free weights. You can just grab a couple water bottles and do this. But um, I have another type of resistance band here, one like this. So the way you can do rows with one of these, you put this part on the floor, step on the band, on either side, hip width apart. And you can do this either single arm or together, but before you start, lean forward as if you're almost about to do a squat. Knees slightly bent, make sure your back is in neutral position. This is very important. And I'm going to show you with one arm at a time so you can see. You take one arm and you retract your shoulder blade to do the row. And you do several like this on each side. You can do one at a time, or you can do them together. Okay, exercise number five, you don't need anything, but you're gonna need either a wall like this, or a doorway, you could do either way. Or you can even do this, actually you can even do this on the floor if you're good at push-ups. Um, we're not doing push-ups, but this is actually going to start from the push-up position. Um, we're actually going to keep our arms straight. So instead of doing a push-up where we bend and push up, what we'll do is place the hands on the wall or doorway, whatever you're using. Uh, try to keep the wrist on the same level as the shoulder. And keeping those arms straight... If you know the cat-cow position from yoga, it's very similar. So we're gonna actually round the shoulders and then squeeze the shoulder blades together. So notice that I'm squeezing the shoulder blades and going back to neutral and then rounding it out. But my arms, they stay straight the entire time. This is not a big motion actually, at least it's the beginning. And this is not easy to get right. So this is one of those exercises that I definitely recommend to do with a personal trainer or a physical therapist to check on your form. Or you do it in the mirror and watch a video to see if you're doing it correctly. Or probably 
watch back on this video later, see if I was doing this correctly. It's been a while since I did this one, but it's a really great exercise. Here are some bonus exercises for those of you who have made it this far. Thank you for watching. These are fantastic for getting the mobilization in the mid-back area. And also just in general, in keeping your spine really healthy. This is very important for your foundation. So real quick, three exercises at the plank you could do it on your forearms or you could do it on your hands however you like to keep that back in neutral position the second one is the cat cow if you're familiar with yoga this one is very very good for your back and the third one is threading the needle so on your hands and knees bring one arm up and thread it through under the other armpit and put that shoulder on the ground. That's it for this video. If these exercises are helpful to you and give you some ideas of how to incorporate physical activity in your life as a musician, share this video with a friend or a colleague. Let me know in the comments below what was your biggest takeaway. For deeper exploration on the pursuit of excellence and well-being for classical musicians, check out my bi-monthly newsletter. It goes out on the 1st and 15th of each month. It's completely free. Links down in the description below. Stay well, stay healthy, and happy practicing.